Hi, uh, my name is Jack Kalfas. Um, I'm a white masculine presenting person in a black shirt. I have short red hair, a dark glasses frames. Behind me is a lamp, a window, and an orange quilted sun hanging on a green wall uh, that I painted myself. I want to say thank you to Lambda for this opportunity and also thank you so much to the ASL interpreters. This is from a story called Rockaway. In May, Amy called to say she was squatting in the caretaker's quarters of the Rockaway Motel. She needed her car. She wanted to sell it. When I pulled her old Volvo wagon into the dusky parking lot, I could see it had once been a nice getaway. Empty pool in the middle of a courtyard surrounded by a clutch of cabins. Thick stands of pitch pine protected the motel from the sea. The caretaker's quarters were cavernous and shadowy with a paneled welcome desk near the door. I shouldn't have been surprised at the place with its blistered brown siding and open floor expanse of saltillo tile, a wide crack rivering down the middle. It was a free gig. Amy often managed to land on her feet in uninhabitable places. She pulled me to her and I inhaled that particular scent of salt and venom her skin produced in damp weather. She'd cut her hair short again, let the blue black dye grow out. Did you drive all the way through? Amy asked me. I slept in the wagon outside Richmond, I said. Maybe stay a couple of days, Amy said. I shrugged as though I hadn't thought about it, hadn't spent the past 24 hours hoping I wouldn't have to pass an entire night with a wall between Amy and me. We still texted all the time. A thousand miles between us felt like nothing most days, like down the street. Amy let me go and I saw her think about kissing me and then think better of it. I would have let her. Billy wants to woo you with dinner tonight, she said. I heard a low mechanical groan from the back of the den. It was only the heating, Amy said. Amy found Billy her first week in Provincetown. She called to tell me she'd met a man who could change her life. He'd picked her out of the line at Aid Services Kitchen, where his charitable donations provided a free buffet dinner three times a week. He wintered in Palm Springs when the cave got too sad. He took Amy to the best restaurants, shared the number of his fantastic therapist, snuck her backstage at the Crown and Anchor to meet Leslie Jordan. I reminded her the last person to change Amy's life this way had landed her in Cobb County Jail. Billy knows you don't like him, Amy said, grabbing a couple of beers from the fridge and handing me one before settling down on the good side of a sagging cherry Chesterfield. She looked disappointed for me. I took my beer to the window and fished a cigarette from the pack in my pocket. I don't have to like him, I said, sliding the pain over and exhaling smoke through the screen. I'm not your girlfriend anymore. We'd been broken up a year officially. Amy left me in Atlanta on the cusp of dogwood season, just as I was gearing up to help her embark on another round of 20 minute diagnoses from board psychiatrists and maybe another month's stay at the mental health facilities at Skyland Trail. She couldn't do it again, she wrote. I was sitting in the passenger seat of her Volvo, trying to figure out how and where she'd killed herself when she texted me from Logan and told me she was moving to the Cape. The hospital bills kept, sorry, the hospital bills in her name kept coming, the white envelopes, then pink, then red. I threw them all away. In Massachusetts, there would be no medical bills. Thank you.